Hello everybody, we're back with another lecture here today and today we're going to continue talking about President Ronald Reagan. Now we're going to do something a little bit different with this lecture and the next few lectures. We're not going to go necessarily in chronological order as history would go in the classroom, but we're going to focus upon themes. And the most important theme of the Reagan presidency is the one that we're going to focus on today and that of course is Reagan as a cold warrior. Now, when Reagan became president after winning the election of 1980, he came into office with a reputation of being an anti-communist crusader, partly because as president of the Screen Actors Guild when he was an actor, Reagan helped root out communist influences in Hollywood. He had always spoke out against communism, even though, ironically, in 1980, as he's running for president, he very rarely mentions the Cold War when he's running against Jimmy Carter. It's all about the economy, the economy, the economy. But once Reagan becomes president, he attacks the Soviet Union. See, Reagan had a different view of the Cold War than everybody else around him. Reagan believed the Cold War could not only end, but it could end with a victory for the United States of America in capitalism and democracy. Everybody else believed that the Cold War was perpetual. Now, when Reagan became president, he didn't have a tremendous background in foreign policy. He had served in World War II, but due to bad eyesight, he had only stayed in the United States filming training videos, a very important job, but he had never been overseas to fight. Uh, he really had no foreign policy experience as a governor, so that's one of the reasons he chose the extremely experienced and foreign policy man by the name of George uh, Herbert Walker Bush to be his vice president. But Reagan had a unique way to view problems, and he brought that to how he viewed the Cold War. Everybody else, like we just said, said the Cold War is going to last forever. It's just a part of life. It's never going away. But Reagan felt differently. And in his very first press conference as president of the United States of America, Reagan began a rhetorical attack on the Soviet Union and communism. He was asked a question about detente at his very first press conference. And Reagan said, well, here's the thing about the Soviets. They lie. They cheat. They steal. So he called the Soviet Union liars, cheaters, stealers. I mean, he attacked them verbally. All of his advisors were like, ah, oh, come on, President Reagan. You can't say that about the Soviet Union. We're locked in a Cold War. They're on equal footing with us uh, as far as military aspects go. And Reagan said, no, the Soviet Union is not equal to the United States of America. The U.S. is a legitimate government for, of, and by the people. Communism, like what they have in the Soviet Union, is an illegitimate government that is forced upon people through the power of dictatorships. So Reagan said there is no equal footing. And Reagan continued to verbally attack the Soviet Union. As a matter of fact, in 1983, Reagan was given a speech to a bunch of preachers. <clears throat> it was the, uh, the gathering of the National Association for Evangelicals in 1983. And Reagan was talking about religion in this speech, and then he slipped in a little phrase about the Soviet Union. He called them the evil empire. Now, Ronald Reagan, even though he continued this rhetorical attack on the Soviet Union, and by the way, Reagan was a very funny man, as we have said in previous lectures. His background as an actor allowed him to tell jokes like nobody else. Uh, Reagan was always telling jokes about communism always telling jokes about the Soviet Union. He just kept hammering away at the Soviet Union and communism, uh, painting a picture of a system of government and economics that was absurd and so far behind the times. But as Ronald Reagan approached the end of his presidency, Reagan took it a step farther. Ronald Reagan, was, he, he had a master plan here. Reagan was not only just speaking out against the Soviet Union, he was also working with the Soviet Union behind the scenes. He was trying to create a dialogue with the Soviet Union. And early on in his presidency, Soviet leaders just kept dying. And he would send Vice President George Bush to their funerals. So many of them passed away at the beginning of Reagan's presidency that Bush actually had a joke where he would look at Reagan and say, they die, I fly to wherever the funeral is. But at one of these funerals, 
Vice President Bush met a young man who would become, and young as far as political leaders go, the leader of the Soviet Union, the last leader of the Soviet Union. And his name was Mikhail Gorbachev. And Bush wrote a letter to President Reagan and said, hey, this guy Gorbachev, we may have something here. We may be able to start a dialogue with him that can bring a successful conclusion and a peaceful conclusion to the Cold War. Well, Reagan and Gorbachev together did strike up a relationship. Now, they were still Cold War adversaries, but they respected one another. But Reagan finally delivered the knockout punch in 1987 while he was visiting Berlin, standing in front of the Berlin Wall, and Reagan delivered that famous speech where he said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And two years later, the Berlin Wall would be in rubble, and three years later, Four years later, sorry, not good at math, the Soviet Union itself would be in rubble. Communism would be reduced to the ash heap of history, and the United States of America, democracy, and capitalism would emerge from the Cold War victorious. Now, there are a few other people who deserve tremendous credit for bringing an end to the Cold War and we'll talk about the specific end of the Cold War when we talk about George Herbert Walker Bush's presidency uh, coming up soon. But we also have to acknowledge the efforts of the Pope John Paul II and the British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher for their role in bringing the Cold War to a close. But Ronald Reagan, to recap, he viewed the Cold War differently. It could end, and it could end with an American victory. And he attacked the Soviet Union with words, but yet... He stuck out a friendly hand to the Soviet Union. And Ronald Reagan, at the very end of his presidency, will even visit the evil empire and walk as a hero, basically, through the streets of the capital of the Soviet Union, Moscow. So Reagan's legacy is really primarily wrapped up in his visionary way to approach the Cold War and to bring the world out of the yoke of communism. Until next time, folks. Have a great day.